advanced tactics for ice climbing, you want to know some stuff like this. So I'm Will Gadd, doing a series of Black Diamond Tech Tips on ice climbing. There are two main things you want to think about when you're swinging an ice tool. Where you're going to swing it, and then how you're going to swing it into the ice. So when you first start ice climbing, everything looks the same. But the more you ice climb, the more you see how the ice works. And what you want is these, are these well-supported corners and concave shapes. That's where you want to swing a tool. That's where it's going to be strong. So if you cruise in here, if I swing on the outside, so say right here, it's probably going to break. Like that. You can see how it all just shattered off. Whereas if I go for the inside, maybe right here, oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So that's the difference between hitting on the inside corners of things versus the outside out here. And you can see it all just keeps breaking. This is generally an, a, a concave area, but right here is a little part back in there. And if you swing into there, it's truck. And then anytime you can get even a little bit of a, a place where the ice has, is, has a corner into it, like this is a bit of a horizontal one here, it might actually work if you're delicate with it. Yeah, it's working. There we go. That's a good placement. But if I hit just right here, it all blows up. So you have to be precise about where you swing, and that means being precise about where your tool goes and what that ice looks like. That's just critical. So how to swing an ice tool. The big idea here is to get the ice tool rotating like this. That's what gives you power. If you push the ice tool with the ice and you're the world's strongest human, you're the Magnus von ice throwing Magnuson of the world, it is not gonna go in. It's all about how fast the head of the tool is moving. That's where all the power comes from. I've selected where I'm gonna swing. I've actually touched it with my ice tool first so I know that's where I'm gonna hit it. I'm gonna bring the tool back. I'm gonna drop it down behind me and look at that go in. <laughs> Things welded. I got, and it wasn't, I didn't use a tremendous amount of power, right? It was all about getting the head of the tool moving, and snapping it over the top, and it's, it's truck. The big idea for starters is to get everything to line up. And how you do that is basically let the tool dangle below you and open your hand up a bit. And you can see the tool just kind of rotates really easily around my little fingers here, my two smallest fingers. That's where most of the rotation comes from in your classical ice tool swing. You can notice how it's just spinning on that point. Then you want to line up these two fingers with the axis on the back of the tool, the spine. And just again, it's still hanging there, but the head of it's the pick, the shaft, my fingers, my hand, into my wrist, all the way up to my shoulder, it's all in one plane. That is critical. If you put your elbow out here and try to swing, it's, you're chicken winging and your swing will suck. It's like, nyeh, 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 nyeh. it's pecking, it just doesn't work. Move it in, now everything works together. So the classical ice tool swing is to get your elbow relatively high. If your elbow isn't relatively high and you're swinging here, it's really not doing anything good. You want to put your ice tool in up there, so you want to get your elbow high. This also not lines everything up from your humerus, your ulna, your radius, all the way into your hand, all the way through the head of the tool. Everything is lined up, and you swing it up over the top and down into the ice. So just your old classic swing again here. Got your hand up, arm nice and straight. I've selected a good spot. Tool comes back, throw it over the top, and it goes in with that satisfying sound. If I do, if, now note that if I'm swinging out here, now nothing's organized. I'm trying to chicken wing it, and I can't. It's much harder to get a good swing out here. You can still do it, but it's far less effective than lining everything up, even if it's to the side and swinging. Note also that a lot of times you might be traversing or something. It's fine to swing out here. Again, everything's lined up. When I swing, it's, it goes in really well. You can swing down here. It's a little bit awkward to twist, but you can do it if you ever wanted to like chop off a bit of icicle. Couple key things here. Note that when, I'm, when I let go of the tool, the pommel's actually about an inch off the ice. If you throw your hand at the ice, you're gonna hit your fingers, it's gonna suck, 
and you're not going to get a good swing. This is classic novice ice tool swinging. And you can see the pommels right on the ice. That is not the way forward. Generally, the way this tool is set up, if you have the pick in that much, you want to be pulling down and the pommel will be a little bit out from the ice once it's set into there. Give or take, that went in really well. The other thing I'm doing here is I'm swinging not at the ice so my pick is hitting it here. I'm swinging so it's going slightly down with a hooking motion into the ice. If you just swing it at the ice, it tends to break it. But when you swing it down and into the ice, it generally goes in a lot better. A couple key things here. Most people try to hang on to ice tools. So they rotate their hand around so those bones and the tops of your fingers are across the tool like this. As soon as you do that, you cannot swing your wrist effectively. It's like, mm -mm, right? You can't bend your wrist like that. It just anatomically doesn't work. So you got to make sure that what lines up are the bones on the front of your hand right down there. You want to line all of that up. You cannot actually swing an ice tool well here. And that's where everybody grabs an ice tool right out of the bed. You try to use your wrist, it just can't bend versus it goes right through. So key things there, line everything up. Have your hand in this kind of swinging position, roughly like that. Bring it up over your head. Let it drop back. Everything's nice and lined up. And it's like cracking the whip. What you're trying to do is get the head of the tool to move really quickly. So everything lines up. You extend your arm up like that, accelerating, and then the tool snaps through and follows through like that. Again, if you have your hand cocked like this, you can't follow through. Most people tend to swing at the surface of the ice, so they swing here. You don't want to do that. It's like a martial artist. You don't kick at the board. You kick through the board. So you actually want to aim at a spot that's about an inch, about two centimeters, underneath the surface of the ice. Because that's where you want your pick to go. And your pick will go through that surface ice and into the good stuff underneath it. There's a lot of different swings in ice climbing. They all have the same principles where everything's lined up. The tool is relatively loose in your hand so that you can flick it well. But if you're going after like a big swing, it's all the way up in a full out power swing. Or maybe you're just going from here, you're like tick, 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 and then maybe it's just the tool itself is ticking. So you got kind of different levels. You got elbow, ha, and then you've got the tick, tick, and everything in between. There's no one perfect swing in ice climbing. There's just lots of ways to do it. As long as everything's lined up and the pick is hitting exactly 90 degrees to the ice. Different um, ice placements require different amounts of swing. If it's been climbed a lot, you don't need to swing at it hard. And in fact, you'll either bury the tool or just waste your, your energy. Um, you want to use the least amount of effort you can and get that industrial level stick. So this is a big hook. All I'm going to do is put it in and I'm going to give it a quick snap. That is good. That is more force than I'm ever going to put on it climbing. I've given it a good yank. I know it's good. I might also lift up on it. Yeah, it's good for a little bit of an outward pull as well. But you test each placement. How hard to swing? Well, that depends. The goal here is to get a stick that you trust. There's an industrial level of stick. The more time you spend ice climbing, the more times your feet are going to blow, and the more times this is going to be your belay. So I like to have, in general, good tools. And swing as many times as you have to. So you may start off just with a little bit of bad luck or whatever, you swung in some place and the surface ice broke and you had to keep swinging. You know, that's starting to get good. Okay, that is, oh yeah, I like that. Now when I pull up on that, I know that it's going to be good. I didn't like that placement. Oh yeah. Like, that's, that, I know that is good. There is like no, I can bounce on it all day long and it's not coming out. And that's what you're after. Maybe you have to swing you know, on really bad ice five or six times. That's, that's okay, that's what you do. You keep swinging until it's good. Yeah, that's what we're after. That, that's a good placement, but it took me like five swings and I'm gonna give it a quick test. If there's any doubt, give it a hard snap. Like that is way more load than I'm ever gonna put on it. Picks in there, you heard the sound, it's good, you know, you, you know it's gonna stay in there. And then when I move up, I'm gonna have total confidence in that. 
and maybe you're trying to more build a placement, then exactly the same principles apply, but you want to reduce it. So I might start the swing here, and this is all my swing is. You know, maybe it's a little bit more delicate piece of ice where I just want to chip away at it. There's a little bit of an ice ledge feature, and if I swing at it really hard, it's all going to blow up. But I can just do a little bit of ticking. Oh yeah, that's good. So where to swing again? Now we're on thin ice. This is like an inch, two inches thick, maybe up to four cm's. And if you just swing randomly on the parts that are shaped like the outside of mixing bowls, they are gonna break, you're gonna go through and hit the rock. So I'm gonna swing delicately there, but it's still gonna st start breaking and it's, yeah, it's not gonna be good. Whereas just over here, there's snow in this little patch. And I know that what is lurking in there is a nice little rounded out area. But if I actually gently swing into there, and now you notice all I'm doing is just moving the tool like that. You can actually put your thumb on the back of the tool Okay, yeah, that's pretty good actually. Yank, yank, we're good to go. But if I just done the full power swing, it would have destroyed it. So the principles are the same. Everything's lined up and I'm just doing a light little tap to build myself a placement there. Most of the 80s we spent climbing like this. We'd never reach up because we were terrified. So it looked like this. We were continually locked off. And we were swinging like this. And then we'd get out here and be chicken winging and it was a disaster. So line everything up, little flick to a huh, to just tick, tick, tick. So where to swing and knowing how to swing and you'll get good sticks, industrial quality. That's what you're after.